But in the doghouse, if you keep bugging me, because I'm sick, and I'll tell Mom if you don't let me watch TV. What's wrong with you? I got a headache and a stomachache. Then why aren't you in bed? Because I want to watch my cowboy show. You look all right to me. I'm not faking. I couldn't go to school because I'm sick. Daddy's sick in bed, too. And Mom believes me anyway. So shut up. Your dad is asleep? He and Mom went at it last night pretty hard. He stayed in bed. I saw what she did to him. It was pretty bad. What did she... Like you don't know. I saw you and her on the couch last Wednesday night. Guess that's why she's grounded now. Huh. Too bad you wouldn't pay me and I had to tell. Huh. What are you talking about? What girl? What? Is there another one too? Wait till I tell. I don't know what girl you're talking about. All summer it's been Stephanie this and Stephanie that. And now you don't remember? You think I'm dumb or something? No, I just can't remember anything like I said. Well, you better remember quick, because the wedding's in two weeks. What? Leave me alone so I can watch TV. That's a weird looking television. Come to think of it, this whole place looks totally retro. What do you mean retro? All TVs look alike. Sure, basically. But this is one old fashioned clunker. Old fashioned? It's brand new. Yeah, but look at the tube. Where's the remote control? What's that? I... Now that I think about it, I can't remember. And what was that you said? About retro rockets? No, retro. It means... It means... Oh man, I know what I mean. That everything here is wrong. But I can't picture the difference. Then shut up and quit bugging me. I'm watching my terrible show. Have you noticed that your show is in black and white? What else? Color? On a TV? Well, I... I think I've seen a colored television before. Have not! Quit it or I'm gonna tell! Hey, look at that! Your mother lets you watch this stuff? Sure. This is part of history. What made America great. And besides, blood and guts are neato. I'm glad you're catching on, Steve. You're not too bad for a lousy rat. Good. Fine on you. Well, hello there. How about some cookies? There's plenty of rejects in the trash. Who are you? That's a fine way to talk to your mother. You're my mother? That's right. Though sometimes I get treated like the hired help around here. I don't remember you. Of course you don't. Until you need your socks washed. No, you don't understand. I can't remember where I am or even who I am. Land's sake, stop your joshing, won't you? Honestly, Steve, I thought you'd grow up a little after graduation. I only hope that new job will plant your feet on the ground. So that's my name. Steve. Your name will be M.U.D. Mud if you don't stop teasing me, young man. Listen, this may sound strange, but I've lost my memory. Do you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious! Sure, and next you'll be telling me you don't remember Hank and your little sister. When did I graduate? Four months ago, as if you could forget that. What college? College? A high school diploma is all you need to get a job. And besides, you can't marry Stephanie if you're going to waste your time going to college. Eighteen years old and you're just now getting your first job. It's a disgrace, but better late than never. I guess we can thank Stephanie for that. 
And just who is Stephanie? Don't you dare toy with that sweet girl. If you start in on her with all this amnesia poop, she'll think her fiancé is having second thoughts about the wedding. Look, all this talk about weddings is nuts. I'm not marrying anybody till I figure out what's going on here. First the heartbreak of psoriasis and now this. Two weeks before the wedding and you're backing out, whatever will the neighbors think? I can't marry someone I don't even know. Fine, have it your way, but leave me out of it. If you're going to break Stephanie's heart, you march right next door and do it yourself. And don't expect me to write you a note. Fiance? This is insane! Oh, you're not having second thoughts about marrying Stephanie. Is that what this silliness is all about? Pre-wedding jitters? Can something like that produce amnesia? Stop this foolishness right now and count your blessings. Stephanie is great at cooking and cleaning. What's cooking and cleaning got to do with anything? Honestly, boys are so dense. What else is there for a wife but cooking and cleaning? You may not appreciate a hot meal on a clean plate when it's there, but if it wasn't, we'd hear about it soon enough, I'll bet. You're saying that's all there is to marriage? Cooking and cleaning? Well, you'll um, have to ask your father about that, but I'm sure Stephanie will do her duty when the time comes. My father. He's in the other room. He decided to sleep in today. Now please let me get back to my cookies. The bake sale is on Friday, and yet you're baking the cookies now. Never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. But they'll be stale by then. That's why I'm throwing them away. And then cooking more? To replace the ones I throw out. Why? Well, I have to. No one's going to pay to eat stale cookies out of the garbage can. But you expect me to. Of course not, Steve. I wouldn't charge you. I'm your mother. Help yourself. What charity is this bake sale supposed to benefit? It'll help provide a fund for bums and hobos who wander into harvest and have no family ties. Kind of a specific target group, isn't it? You have to pay attention to detail when dealing with such people. I don't know what you mean. You will. The whole thing has been organized by the Lodge. Tell me more about this bake sale. Why is it so important? As I told you, many unfortunates who come to harvest end up needing financial help. Why is that the town's problem? It's not a problem, so long as those folks are taken care of. It's the will of the Lodge. What Lodge? The Hall of the Order of the Harvest Moon, Steve. It's just the finest place in Harvest, and the most exclusive. What's so great about it? Hard to say, since hardly anyone gets inside. But it wouldn't be so exclusive if it wasn't just wonderful. Just like the new Reynolds dishwasher with their patented auto-dry process TM. I've never used one, but I know I want it. Instead of sulking around the house all day, why not walk over to the lodge and apply for membership? That's wonderful, Steve. If you got into the lodge, you'd be the talk of Harvest. Harvest is a town unlike any you've ever known. In what way? I don't have time to go into it now. Why not take a walk around town and pester someone else? I'm busy. Harvest is a town unlike... In what way? I don't have time. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets.
Hey, Steve, I'm Jimmy James. Remember me? Uh, I guess not. Hey, how come you haven't been putting the paper out for me in the morning? Yeah? Well, try to remember, will ya? How'd you expect a working Joe to make an honest living? You don't put the paper out, I'm out of a job. So what? You don't get paid for picking up papers anyway. The Sentinel building burnt down. What the heck else am I supposed to do? Listen, start putting that paper out and everything will be Jake, okay? That's all I want. That and a pair of sneakers. Walking this route every day has worn holes in mine. Say, you got any spare sneakers? Oh, gee whiz. Look, if you find any, I'd be willing to trade you for them. Something really neato. Think about it. See you later, alligator. Hey, Steve. You've been doing a swell job putting the paper out in the morning. You just keep doing that and we won't have any problems. That's not much to ask, is it? Yes? I need some help, Mr... Postmaster Boyle, what can I do for you today? Mm, sorry, youngster, we're out of applications right now. Come on, you must have one around here somewhere. Well, I do have the master, but you can't write on that. And I only make copies once a month on the button, regular as clockwork. Afraid not, son. You can't get them anywhere but the post office. I'm sorry, you'll just have to come back in a month, same as anyone else. And even then, I can't guarantee you'll get an application. The line is always long, and there are never enough to go around. It's very important that I get in quickly. That's what they all say. Postmaster Boyle, I'll just die if I don't get into the lodge. I can't make an exception, young man. It just wouldn't be right. Next time you post, don't forget the zip code! Howdy, Steve. Yeah, howdy back, Mr... Pete Swell, Steve. Don't you pull my old leg now. Change your mind about that aluminum siding? What are you talking about? I really think you should talk your father into buying some. He can afford it. And I can't stress enough the value of some really fine aluminum siding. Keeps it warm in the summer, cool in the winter, and it keeps out the sheep. Pastorelli ought to look into some, but I can't get him to understand a word I say. Steve, aluminum siding can't get a fair shake no more. Started when those firemen came to harvest, filling people's heads with newfangled notions like color coordination and interior design. You can paint aluminum, you know if you want to. But even so, I can't seem to move it anymore. Not even to a rube like Pastorelli. Thank God for the plumbing. Pastorelli's a rube from way back. Ask Clem Parsons how he followed up with the alarm system in here. I'm a plumber. I could fix it for him, but he just won't listen. Well, I seen the end coming for the aluminum siding game, so I took a mail course and learned how to be a plumber. Now, 
there's a business that never lets up. You'd be surprised what people flush down the toilet. Nice to see you again, Steve. Hello there, youngster. They say them aliens I was telling you about, well, they came back last night. Cut another crop circle in my south field. How come I never seen none of them saucers clam? Them aliens is wild, they picked. You don't cross the intergalactic void without learning a trick or two. You know what Pastorelli did? Yesterday, he gets an alarm system to protect his pole. <laughs> Only he don't know how to rig it, so now it's all awry. Why, that barber's pole of his is his pride and joy. Brought it all the way over from Italy, wrapped all special-like. It ain't nothing but colored glass with some bulbs just stuck up in it. Cuddy thinks it's the be-all end-all. Installed that alarm system just to protect it. Though who in tarnation did want to steal a worthless piece of junk like that? I, I don't know. Maybe them aliens, Clem? Oh, Pete, don't be ignorant. Them aliens don't give a fig for no colored glass. You think if they can build spaceships, they can't make a bad gum barber pole? Crazy head don't know nothing about science. Pastorelli shelled out for an alarm system, all right, but he's too cheap to hire an electrician to hook her up. Dang idiot crosswired it to the fire sprinkler, so now when the alarm goes off, it sets the sprinkler spraying. Our nation. Aliens looking for intelligent life ought to stay away from this shop, sure enough. Well, son, the ways of the alien is a specialized area of woodcraft unknown to all but the wiliest sportsmen. What you gotta remember is, your average alien is smarter than your average human. So you gotta be extra careful building your blind if you want to bag one. You hunt aliens. Son, after nailing an alien, you can never go back to quail. What? You think you can get one of those at a swap meet? Line your blind with lead to fool their sensing machines. Lay real quiet and wait. Preferably in the woods around the nuclear base. Oh, they love messing around out there. Why not wait outside your field, Clem? Wait for them to come a carving. All they do, their crop doodles, with zap guns, you darn fool, don't you know nothing? Besides, ain't no place to put the blind out in the field. Now you listen to Clem Parsons if you want to tag an unearthly being. They cross the void, wondering what lies beyond, all the time not knowing that what awaits them is... Buckshot! Pastorelli's a funny sort. Foreigner, don't you know? He cuts hair pretty good, but he don't know spit about nothing else. You just ask him to hook up an alarm system if you need convincing. Anytime, Steve. Can I help you, dear? Who are you? This is Phelps General Store. So who would that make me? Maybe you need to go back to Gein Memorial and have Miss Whaley teach you about logic. I'm fuzzy on a lot of things these days. My memory's gone. Shaw, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious. I need some help. Well, they say a sharp blow to the head is a good thing for amnesia. In which case, I'd recommend Miss Whaley again. Then again, they say a good scare can jog the memory. In which case, I'd advise you to visit the sergeant at arms over at the lodge. That man gives me the willies. Speaking of willies, how's your father? Don't know. Haven't seen him. Care to buy anything today? 
Just point to whatever you want. I'm a little hard of hearing. A girly magazine? Why, Steve, I'm surprised at you. I'd expect that sort of thing from Deputy Loomis, but never from you. He's always coming in here oogling the girly magazines behind my counter. Darned if I'd sell him one, though. I know his wife, for heaven's sakes. Well, will you sell me one? I certainly will, Steve. That kind of interest is healthy for a young fellow. Stares him away from being a fireman. Hello, Steve. Care to buy anything today? Okay, dear. You check back if you decide there's anything you want. I'll be happy to help you. Come back soon. There he is, my future son-in-law. And how's he doing today? What brings him to the Pottstown household, huh? Huh? Oh, you'll have to ask the missus about that. Stephanie's grounded to the wedding. <laughs> Can't have her changing her mind at the last minute. Not with all that meat at stake. Meat is the foundation of any decent society. Everyone needs at least three servings of red meat a day. And anyone who says otherwise is a commie. And once you're married to Stephanie, I'll be part of the family too. And your father will give me all the meat I want. <sighs> Kinda makes up for not getting into the lodge. Well, don't look at me. Mrs. Potsdam wants Stephanie to study hard for her finals. If it was up to me, you could go straight upstairs, but you know, <laughs> the little woman will have to ask her permission to see Stephanie. Sorry, Steve. The last thing I want to do is upset you and your father before the wedding. Not with the meat at stake. We will remind your dad about the meat. Won't you? Tell me about this wedding. Well, it looks like we're going to have to hold the wedding down at the funeral parlor, since I'm not a member of the lodge. <laughs> Mr. Moynihan has given his okay, and your father is going to cater the affair <laughs> with plenty of meat. Why are you so anxious to get into the lodge? There's wonders inside. I've heard there's more meat in there than they know what to do. Now that you're of age, Steve, you might go down to the post office and fill out a lodge application. They're always looking for new blood. Tell me about this wedding. Well, it looks like we're... Moynihan is the undertaker. He also runs the Wayward Hotel. Since he's providing the space for the wedding, 
you might stop by and say hello to him just to be sociable. But whatever you do, be sure to say hi to your father for me. Will you do that? Tell him hi and remind him of the meat. I haven't seen my father. He's locked in a room. He's not going to die, is he? Like I said, I don't know. That woman, Mom, tends to him herself. Well, next time you see him, be sure to tell him that I said hello. And tell him that I'm praying for his speedy recovery. And also, would you remind him about the meat? Especially about the meat. Yeah, fine. If I see him. You should be more concerned. If he dies, then who's going to take over the slaughterhouse? Who's going to tend to the meat? I guess as his son, you'd take over. Right? I can't imagine a better job than working in a slaughterhouse. Bite your tongue with that serpent's tooth. Your dad's slaughterhouse is the most successful business in Harvest. You'll love it there. Oh, sure. Cutting animals open may not be much fun. Reaching into their bodies and yanking out the bloody guts, intestines dangling and slapping against you, the smell of death and shit in your nostrils all the time. Well, those are all definite cons. But once you're done, the guts have been washed into the gutters. What are you left with? Meat. Rows and rows of scrumptious red meat. Hello, Steve. Have you flossed today? Honestly, you men can insult a woman without even knowing you've done it. What a horrible thing to say. You're both standing around baking cookies. Same kind of dress. Same pearls. So bizarre. There's nothing bizarre about baking cookies. The Harvest Charity Bake Sale is Friday, you know, and by gosh, Mrs. Marvin Potston Jr. can be counted on to do her share. Just because I'm doing housework doesn't mean I have to be a drudge. It's a wife's duty to look good for her husband at all times. What's wrong with wearing pearls, for heaven's sake? Nothing, but you look like June Cleaver. Some kind of sitcom mom. Sitcom? Jeez, you know, a situation comedy. The weird part is, I can't remember how I know that. I'm much too busy with housework to watch TV. Maybe Mr. Potsdam would know about sitcom. Comes. Stephanie doesn't watch TV, though. She's grounded. Mr. Poston feels there's too much at stake to allow Stephanie to run around loose. She doesn't want to get married either, huh? Are you saying you don't want to marry my daughter? I don't know your daughter, Mrs. Potsdam. Why is she grounded? Afraid she'll run away before the wedding? No! She's as delighted as we are about the wedding, every bit as delighted as we are. But she might get hit by a car, or a falling piano, or who knows what. Mr. Potsdam wants us all to be one happy family, and he doesn't want to risk anything happening at the last minute. I don't see any reason why not. Give my regards to your parents.
Who are you? What are you doing in my room? Haven't you heard? We're getting married. So, you're the one. Steve, isn't it? You mean... you don't know me? I mean I don't know anyone! I don't remember anything! How many times do I have to say it? Just one, Stephanie, because... I can't remember a damn thing either. Really? Oh God, I thought it was just me. You're not alone. Can you tell me what's going on here? Those people downstairs have locked me in my room. They say I'm grounded until the wedding. They claim to be my parents. I can't dispute it because I can't remember for sure one way or the other, but it doesn't feel right. I believe you. Maybe some of these people believe you too. Maybe they're playing dumb. Why? Maybe they're responsible. Either way, something really weird is going on here. I've got to escape, and so do you. Because in a way, whether you know it or not, I think we're both grounded. It's been hell. They treat me well, but they won't let me leave this room. Not even to go out in the yard. Not until the wedding. They won't tell you why? Each one blames the other for grounding me. They make up different excuses. Different things I did. None of which I remember. So I sit up here. Watch the world outside my window. And listen to the noises in the house. Every morning, a weird boy comes to the house and picks up the paper. He doesn't deliver the paper. He picks up scrap paper that Miss Potsdam sets out on the porch for him. Some morning she forgets, and the boy gets furious. He gives me the creeps. Anything else you can tell me? I hear these weird scraping sounds in the bathroom sometimes. Like something is sliding along the wall. Claws, maybe. And Mr. Potsdam. I don't like the way my dear daddy looks at me. Both of them are always watching me. But especially him. You don't think they're dangerous, do you? I think this whole place is dangerous. I think we've got to escape. Before it's too late. Everything in Harvest seems to revolve around this damned lodge, this Order of the Harvest Moon. They're responsible for this insane bake sale that's coming, and for the Harvest Blood Drive, too. When people talk about the lodge, it's always in this hushed, reverent tone. Mom keeps telling me that women can't join, but she keeps pressuring me to get you to join. She's not the only one who wants me to sign on with the lodge. That's probably the worst thing you could do. You think the Lodge is some kind of trap? I think all of Harvest is a trap. If that's true, maybe joining the Lodge is the way out. Look, why not explore the town a little? I can't get out of here, but if I could, that's what I'd do. Maybe you can figure out what's happening here without going anywhere near the Lodge. You're really afraid of the Lodge, aren't you? I look at that building. All lit up at night, and I get scared. I mean, look at the damn thing! Seem like a harmless bunch of masons to you? Escape? Harvest is a prison, Steve. Don't forget that. Of course I'm right! Maybe my amnesia isn't total after all. You're familiar to me, like we've met before, in another life. Maybe we really do live here. Maybe we were together, and the same thing happened to both of us. An accident. Something. Neither of us has bumps on our heads, if that's what you're getting at. Have you been able to remember anything else? Anything at all? Well, I have had these recurring dreams. Just fragments, really. Strange, abstract images. Liquid, chrome. Probably just a dream. Well, have you thought about how to escape Harvest? 
Come back and visit me soon, okay? It's not often that I get visitors. I am Tetsuo Crumb. The ignorant of harvest called me the Wasp Woman. A pejorative, no doubt. Born of fear and a poverty of imagination. I don't understand. The politics of honey. The Judeo-Christian rites of sacrifice and conventional taboos against unbridled pleasure are all responsible for the prejudice against wasps. The politics of honey are intertwined with the age-old struggle of the aesthetic versus the commercial. Because I choose to raise wasps instead of bees, I'm frowned upon by the community. Why? Well, raising bees is acceptable because they produce honey. But sometimes it's not what is produced. So much as what is performed. I don't see any particular use for wasps. Why must everything have a use? Is money always the determining factor? More slender, more aerodynamic than the bee. The wasp is a joy to the whole. Beautiful and juicy. Isn't that enough to compensate for the little drawbacks? Well, as you can see, the little darlings do love to sting. Another source of prejudice for the masses, and another reason to love them. Bees are like animals. They sting only for a reason, for sacrifice. They have no conception of individual sensation, of pleasure. Yes, a great deal of pleasure. The wasp is a sensual being, not a laborer, hedonistic instead of industrial. Some think them quick to anger. In truth, they are easily swayed to ecstasy. They penetrate your flesh and the muscular contractions in their thorax as they pump venom could be likened to the muscular contractions of ejaculation. Each painful welt, an act of love. A triviality. Stephen, who are you? I am Daniel Moynihan, mortician and proprietor of the Wayward Hotel. 
Most people ask me why I don't remember their names. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Besides, as one who deals with the dead, I try not to involve myself in the affairs of the living. Your loss of memory is of no concern to me, true or false. Ironic, considering my recent involvement in a charity event. What are you talking about? My complaints were central to the scheduling of the upcoming Harvest Bake Sale. I'm gratified the Order of the Harvest Moon got involved. The proceeds will certainly help cover my losses. It seems that, like some elephant's graveyard, people of low station come to harvest to die. They simply drop dead, penniless, and they all need burials. God knows, by putting these people up at the Wayward Hotel, I do more than my fair share. So why must I pay for the coffins and burial materials as well? My losses to the dead are substantial. Hopefully the bake sale will offset some of them. Yes, I prepare them. I use this astro glue to close my autopsy incision rather than sutures. It's much faster, more efficient. Of course, it only holds for a short while, but once they're in the ground, who cares if they split open? They will anyway. The pressure of the gases and the worms pressing outward, rupturing the cavity open. So why bother with fancy needlework? A cold-blooded approach. But what of my losses? Do you realize if it weren't for the efforts of the Order of the Harvest Moon, the bake sale and so forth, even with the Wayward Hotel, I'd be hard-pressed to stay in business. As always, the Order of the Harvest Moon has taken the lead in addressing our societal ills. Through their sponsorship of the Blood Drive and the Bake Sale, the Lodge ensures that all our needs are met. Needs? Such as... Pardon me, there are corpses to prepare. And my losses have been substantial of late. If you're sincerely interested in the order, however, you should stop by the lodge and speak with the sergeant at arms. Why should I be interested, Mr. Moynihan? Of all the spots in Harvest, the lodge is the most prominent, literally and figuratively. It is the ambition of everyone here to join, and join you must to attain wisdom. What kind of wisdom? If I knew, I'd be a member. I have the feeling you have what it takes to join the Order, Stephen. We all believe that. Whether or not you live up to your potential is up to you. I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. You can't have that, Stephen. I need it for my work. And may I say you're a rude young man for attempting to steal it. I was only going to borrow it. Indeed. And have you anything I could hold as security? Security? Like what? Money? I'm afraid that's not good enough. I need that glue for my work. You must present me with something significant if you'd have me part with it. Please excuse the mess. They've done wonders with the upstairs bedroom, but this garage defies color coordination. Sorry, Steve. After I'm through here, I've got cleaning to do. Rush, rush! I don't converse on the job, Steve. Don't bother me, I'm sketching. Oh, look what you made me do! Hello, Steve. Welcome to the House of Flame, as we like to call it. Oh, cut it out, Spots, honestly. Once he gets barking, a good piece of meat is the only way to shut him up. There you go, Spot. So, 
Oh, Steve! Bet you don't remember me. Heard about that short in the old wiring. I'm Fire Marshal Sparky, head of your fire department. Don't be silly. Everyone thinks that amnesia kick is a scream. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Besides, it's my job to keep abreast of developments in the community, to better serve you, the public. I'm sure you'll be thrilled when you learn of the many civic improvements we have planned for your fire department. Such as? Well, don't tell any of the others, but I've secured a bolt of the most divine mauve material. I've hidden it because, well, if any of these Marys got a hold of it, it'd be gone in a jiffy. So I'd rather keep it hush-hush. I'm going to make new drapes for the firehouse, and if I have any left, Cross your fingers. I'm going to make everyone matching mauve pillow cozies. Those are civic improvements. Don't be such a party pooper, Steve. We're talking about art here. Besides, we haven't had a fire in Harvest since the newspaper building burned down. Though I'll admit that the Wasp Woman's place is one big accident waiting to happen. Isn't that right, Spots? Art enriches the community, Steve. No less than a pulsing fire hose, or a fireman beating down a blazing door. So what if we're drawing a nude man? So what if all we ever draw is a nude man, or the same nude man over and over in all sorts of provocative positions? Context, not content. Process, not subject. Don't be so ghost, Steve. It's beneath you. A dreadful affair. You wouldn't think that a brick and steel building with a sprinkler system could go up that quickly. Oh, please. Dwayne was glad enough to see the thing go up, and so was McKnight. If you could get into that safe in his wall... <sighs> Forget it. Look, Steve, as far as I know, the fire was an accident. Let's just leave it at that. Now don't you go moving! Some people think all we do is sit around, sketching fetching examples of manhood for our own amusement. Nothing could be further from the truth. Why, just the other day we cited Ted through a crumb for fire code violations. All the dried out paper wasp nests clustered around our wooden house. Why, it's a catalog just waiting for the right faggot. Believe me, none of us wants to see another fiasco like the Sentinel fire. Bye bye. I don't converse on the job, Steve.
Hello, Steve. Let me introduce myself. I'm Sheriff Dwayne Dwayne, and this here is Loomis. Pleasure, I reckon. Then, we haven't met before? Of course we have, but I heard about your alleged amnesia and figured I'd play along. I sure hope this is just a prank, and not the start of some insanity plea. Keep your nose clean, or you'll wind up in jail, and that's no place to hold a wedding. Why do you want to break your poor mama's heart with all this amnesia bunk? I'm telling you the truth. Why won't anyone believe me? Well, you've always been a kidder, Steve. Yeah, so everybody keeps telling me. Boy, you need to stop all this funning and get serious. You've got a wedding coming up soon. Heck, you should be thinking about your career and about joining the Lodge. Amnesia or no? You can't have forgotten you're about to marry the prettiest little thing at Harvest. I think you and Stephanie are perfect for each other. I just hope her father's disappointment doesn't spoil everything. Disappointment? Mr. Potsdam wants to hold the wedding in the lodge, but he'll never get in. Like all the rest, he's always hanging around the post office the first day of the month, waiting for Boyle to bring out that month's lodge applications. And there's always a long line, never enough applications to go around, and even if you do get an application, chances are you're right out of luck. Fewer call to the order and even less accepted. And Potsdam, well, they've turned him down so many times, unless he does something radical, he'll never get in. Crime-wise, nothing much has happened in Harvest since the newspaper fire. Oh, sure. Every week or so, we get the odd transient dropping dead. But other than that, it gets pretty slow around here. Sure, you remember. The Sentinel building burned down about six months ago. That's what I'm telling you, Sheriff. I don't remember anything. Why won't you believe I have amnesia? Well... You've always been a kidder, Steve. Anyway, the fireman said the fire was caused by arson. I never caught the perp, though. But we found the gas can that was used. Yes, sir, -y Bob. It's in the evidence room. Loomis, that's classified. Darn it. How many times you gonna have to tell me to keep my mouth shut, I wonder? <laughs> Sorry, boss. You've got the gas can in the evidence room? Did you dust it for prints? <laughs> uh, you've been watching too much TV, Steve. Heck, who can make out all those curvy lines anyhow? No, it's sitting in there gathering dust, clean as the day we found it. Just in case I ever need a spare gas can. That case is closed, Steve. Loomis here is my deputy. Without him, I'd have a hard time keeping the peace, or at least taking a lunch break. Mainly Loomis answers the phone and babysits the office while I'm out, though sometimes he likes to go in the back and stain the jail mattress. Isn't that right, Loomis? Oh, now, Sheriff, what you gotta go and say that for? Loomis has more than his share of problems. I wouldn't invite him to the wedding. Or, if you do, make sure he doesn't catch the garter. That could be embarrassing. Oh, I wouldn't do nothing, Dwayne. But I sure would like a little garter than been around Stephanie's thigh. Oh, well, that'd be right special. Stop on by any time, Steve. Anything I can help you with? Help yourself. Speaking of which, you're real lucky to be marrying Stephanie. She don't look like a good woman. I just hope she don't turn out like Mrs. Loomis. Her mercy forbid Mrs. Phelps. Good women can be awful hard on a man's needs, don't you know?
Why, you sure ought to appreciate what a man's got to do sometimes in a parked car or a waist high knot hole in a tree or jail cell at noon. Matter of fact, Mrs. Phelps got no reason not to sell you some of them French postcard girly picture books. If you can get any, it's see clear to part with them. Bring them round with the sheriffs at lunch and I'd be obliged. Of course, I don't necessarily mean French postcards. That's just what we called them in my day. Any kind of girly picture book, the kind men like, would be just dandy. I'd be right grateful, kiddo, if you were to bring me one. Mrs. Phelps down at the general store don't help things none. She's got them special picture books, the one with the ladies. But she won't sell me none on account of she knows my wife, Mrs. Loomis. That gum if that don't burn my britches. If and I even ask about them, she tells Mrs. Loomis and I get the broom. Enough to break a man's heart. Her burning my French post cards and me unable to replace them. <laughs> a man's got needs, don't you know? Any time, kiddo. Oh, Steve, what are you doing sneaking up on me like that? God, for a second I thought you were Mr. Johnson. Ah, <sighs> what would you like to order? Sure, and my name's Edna Fitzpatrick. I'm not the one with amnesia. Then you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. I guess I've changed. I'm not kidding. Now, Steve, Faking amnesia won't help anything. If you don't want to marry Stephanie, then don't. But don't play sick, for heaven's sake. I'd expect that from Karen, not an 18-year-old. Mr. Johnson has a... a liking for me. I'd call it a crush, but that's too innocent a word. He's a bitter man with too much time on his hands. He's never gotten over being rejected by the Lodge. And there's something unwholesome in the way he looks at me. I'm always glad when the Sheriff comes in every day at noon. Sheriff Duane is such a dear man. And I don't just say that because he's my most regular customer. Every single day, rain or shine, he comes in here at noon for lunch. Sits in the same spot, too. That's at least an hour every day when I can be sure Mr. Johnson won't show up. You know, it's funny. Duane never comes in here with Deputy Loomis, but he frequently dines with Mr. McKnight. You know, the owner of the TV station. Sometimes he comes in with Postmaster Boyle, but somehow I don't think they're friends. Though I see them together a lot, Boyle and the Sheriff never act very friendly towards each other. Almost like there's some kind of bond between them besides friendship, though what it might be I can't imagine. Maybe Sheriff Duane resents the fact that he's never been able to get into the lodge. Though that's not Boyle's fault. He just hands out the applications. He doesn't decide who gets admitted. Stop by any time, Steve. Hi, what's your name? Karen. What are you doing? Playing. My mom is working, so I gotta stay out of her hair. Wanna play? Not now. Maybe later. Okay. Bye-bye. Boy, the way you keep pestering me, you'd think you were feeling guilty about something. Are you? Stop on by any time, Steve.
I seen you brung me a girly picture book. Oh, don't give me it now. Come back when the sheriff's at lunch. Say a little afternoon, and you'll be right as rain in my book, kiddo. Boy, the way you keep pestering. Stop on by any time, Steve. I can't talk now. The dishes are stacked up and back, and I better take advantage of the lull. Stop by any time, Steve. Bye-bye. Young man, we really have nothing to say to each other. I have the feeling your image shall soon adorn my slab, and I'd rather not know the face of the meat I'm slicing. I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. Take a look at these, the guest books to both the Wayward Hotel and the Mortuary. The names are identical. Steve, this is worse than I thought. Looks like out-of-towners don't live long in Harvest. And if we're really out-of-towners, as we suspect we are... Get us out of here, Steve, before it's too late. Take a look at these. The guest books to both the Wayward Hotel and... The names are identical. And if we're real... Get us out of here, Steve. Before it's too late.
Steve, how's your father? Is he better? Uh, about the same, I guess. He's been away from work for weeks. And when I call your house, your mother won't let me talk to him. I haven't seen him either. This is a fine kettle of fish, I must say. Though I am glad to see you taking an interest in the business in your dad's absence. Who are you? Aw, oh, Steve, I didn't want to believe that amnesia hokum. Now you're saying you don't remember your pal Pat O'Reilly? You may come to realize that this business is not for everybody. Just ask your poor, ill dad. It takes dedication and a strong stomach. A lot of times, when I'm finished scrubbing up and digging the bits of intestine out from my fingernails, I must confess I don't have much appetite for red meat. But red meat is one of the principal food groups, and you've got to have it. So when you can do this all day and help yourself to a juicy red steak afterwards, then by golly, you can call yourself a butcher. Of course, amnesia would certainly help that, wouldn't it? What exactly is wrong with your dad? I don't know. I wouldn't worry about it too much, Steve. You should be thinking about running the family business one day. That, getting into the lodge. Look, I'm not kidding about the amnesia. Why won't anyone believe me? Well, you always were such a kidder, Steve. Funny how that's beginning to sound like a stock answer. Like it was coached. You sure are acting like a kidder, son. With your dad ill, you're gonna need to start behaving like an adult. Especially if you're gonna take over the family business. You may come to realize that this business is not for everybody. Just ask your poor, ill dad. It takes dedication and a strong stomach. A lot of times when I'm finished scrubbing, I must confess, but red meat is one of the prince. Then by golly, you can call yourself a butcher. Of course, amnesia would certainly help that, wouldn't it? Come to think of it, I don't see any cattle around here. Where do you keep the animals? <laughs> Does it matter? The end product is all the customer cares about, Steve. And we only carry the finest meat, only the juiciest cuts. Once you take over the business, you'll realize the importance of maintaining quality while cutting costs. We know what we're doing here, Steve. If we didn't, would the Lodge use us to cater their affairs? Your father's very particular about the profits, Steve. No freebies for anyone. But seeing how you're his son, if you'll bring written permission from your father, I'll give you the meat. Don't be such a stranger, Steve. And my best to your dad. Steve, good of you to drop by, big guy. Haven't seen you since graduation. A lot of changes, I hear. You could say that. Good, good. That's a nice part of my job, turning fine young men and women out into the world and then watching them prosper. Of course, I was able to reach more people at the old Sentinel, God bless her. But then again, I never got to see the results of my work up close before. Who are you? You know very well I'm Mr. Harold, the principal of Gain Memorial. Steve, I've heard about this amnesia nonsense. I had hopes you'd be in the lodge by now, fine young fellow like yourself. But now, I think maybe you need a little more quality time. What do you mean, quality time? Some, like Miss Whaley, favor stern discipline. Corporal punishment as a means of socialization. Myself, I temper discipline with love. Quality time can be such a warm, sharing experience. After just a few sessions, you'd stop this amnesia nonsense 
and become a productive member of society and a fit candidate for the Lodge. Big guy, born some quality time, the greatest gift I can bestow upon you as your former principal is a word of advice. Join the order of the harvest moon at any cost. Within the lodge lies your future, and without dust. Why do you keep calling me big guy? A sign of respect, lad. As principal, my station is higher than yours now, but you never know what the future holds, so you should always hedge your bets and pay tribute to your inferiors. You never know who will come to power, or who, even now, wields it behind the scenes. For all I know, you might already be a member of the Order, with access to the Lodge. If that were the case, you'd be my superior, and I'd be all that much better off having shown you respect and spent some quality time with you. Drop in again soon. Adult education is a wonderful thing, as is adult quality time. My goodness, class, this is Stephen. He used to be a student here at Gein Memorial. Say hello, class. They're reticent. The educator's gravest problem today is the apathy of the students. What's wrong with their heads? I can tell you in one word, Stephen, discipline. Thank goodness you weren't a sulky bear. You were always a smiley bear. Then you remember me? Not as such. So many pupils, Stephen. They come and they go. But I can always spot those who were nice boys. You can tell from the forehead. The lobes. Right, class? I'm glad you stopped by, Stephen. Would you care to say a few words to the class about civic responsibility? Not really. I was just passing through. Oh, but you must, Stephen. A positive role model might be just the thing to inspire these little monsters. Stephen, have you any questions for me? Or shall I continue with class? away then. We don't practice corporal punishment here. I've never believed in that old adage, spare the rod and spoil the child. A rod is too thin. But a baseball bat? That bridges the generation gap quite nicely. Oh dear, Colonel Monroe is conducting another air raid drill. Everyone into the hallway, quick! If an A-bomb hits, what good is it going to do to duck and cover? My stars, that was exciting. Stop by any time, Stephen. Initiates may enter the Hall of the Order of the Harvest Moon. Did you... say something? I did not speak, but my mind touched yours. Telepathy? But how? Only those who seek enlightenment warrant my attention. Do you hunger for true knowledge? Forbidden knowledge, the forgotten place. 
pleasures, and pleasures as yet undiscovered. But such is not for the likes of you. Not yet. You must first fill out an application to be considered for initiation into the mysteries. are available at the post office. Postmaster Boyo disseminates them to the uninitiated. I do not sully my hands. Then I just fill it out and return it to you, or what? You may find it difficult to obtain an application. You will no doubt need to find some way to persuade Postmaster Boyo to give you one in the middle of the month, as it is against his rules. When you do, however, bring it to me. And if you are worthy, you will be put to the test. Stay tuned, buckaroos. There's more to come on Range Riders Cowboy Roundup. So don't go away. And what's your name, hombre? Steve. Steve's a swell name. My dog's name is Steve. Would you like my autograph, Steve? Here you go, then. Violence? What about it? What red-blooded American doesn't? Nothing like an exploding head to get the blood pumping. Literally, that is. Even so, do you think society pays a heavy price for the violence in the media? Of course they pay a heavy price. Just look at the net profits. They'll line up around the block to see a good slaughter. Now, excuse me, we're going back on the air. Hey, sport. This is a private office. Yeah, I know, Mr... McKnight. I own and operate this station. Have you brought me some news for tonight's broadcast, or... I've lost my memory. That's news. The hell it is! You always were a kidder, Steve. Any real news to tell me? Actually, I was just wanting to know more about the TV station. Hey, WHAR is the only television station in Harvest. Since the old Sentinel went under, what with the newspaper building burning down and all, we're golden. Nobody competes with us, sport. Partners, I run the whole show solo, pal. Tell me my name is Steve. All right, the section 21. Keep your distance, son. I wouldn't want to have to blow your head off. That makes two of us. So you're the amnesiac, huh? Just another draft dodging ploy the way I see it. But at least you're not an alien. You see their ships every now and then. Sometimes swell bags one in the woods. Who are you? Colonel Buster Monroe, commander of the Harvest Nuclear Missile Installation, keeping America safe from those who would dye our flag red, white, and pink. These are nuclear missiles? 
goddamn right they are. Every one of them ready to rain death on the Ruskies. All I gotta do is hit the button and blammo! The price of vodka goes through the roof. Along with the vodka. Well, I suppose you have, you know, safeguards against accidents? Safeguards? Don't be such a weak sister. There are no safeguards. This is the 50s. Then, you have sole control of the, uh, missiles. That's right. Been in charge here since WW2, when I got my lower torso shot off in the war. Those panty wastes in Washington wanted to stick me behind a desk. To hell with that! They owed me! I left my legs in Dusseldorf. They owed me! Of course, they felt that, after the trauma of having to crawl from Germany to England trailing my intestines behind me, I was too emotionally unstable to continue in the military. That's why they gave me this nice cushy job, and put me in charge of the nuclear missiles. I gauged my progress. While I crawled from Germany to England, my intestines would unravel, such that every three miles I'd have to roll them back up and stuff them back in. It became my benchmark, what I lived for. Every time I stuffed my intestines back in, I knew I was three miles closer to freedom. In this way, I kept my sanity. That's what I told those idiots in Washington. But did they listen? No! Some weak sister shrink said I was too emotionally unstable to kill Koreans. So they transferred me to this boring stockpile of armed nuclear warheads. And to top it off, those pansy firemen won't let me join the Harvest Volunteer Fire Department. Oh, it makes you wonder. What's the point of going on? I wanted to get back into the thick of the action and out of this desk job. Those firemen are a damn peculiar bunch of ladies. I thought they'd object to my lack of a lower body, but they wouldn't let me join the fire department because they said I couldn't draw naked men. Can't draw naked men? Who the hell wants to? I could draw one if I was a sick commie pervert. Look, I did this last night, what do you think? Thank you, son. You're a good soldier. Hello, Steve. How's the husband-to-be? Other than having no memory, I guess I'm all right. All right? You should be ecstatic, considering what you're getting into, if you haven't gotten into it already. Speaking of which, I heard Stephanie was grounded. Her daddy's worried about getting his meat. Though if I were him, I'd be more concerned about Stephanie getting some meat. Uh, right. And you are... You always were a kidder, Steve. I'm Mr. Johnson, remember? Glad you stopped by. Just got finished waxing the tucker. I could use a little relaxation. But since Edna's not here, I might as well talk to you. Edna Fitzpatrick is one of the snootiest women in town. I declare there isn't a woman in Harvest that turned me away. If I was interested, that is. Just because she owns DNAs, she's got all these highfalutin ideas about independence. And her with a little girl to raise. That child needs a father. And Edna, well, she needs a good, hard penis. 
What makes you so sure she needs a penis? You saying Edna's getting it from someone else? Like maybe that damn Sheriff Dwayne Dwayne? He's over at DNA's diner every day from noon to one, eating his dad gum pie. And I got a feeling he'd like Edna for dessert. Sure, it's the only diner in town, but I'm sure he's got more on his mind than food. I'll admit DNA's diner does good business. But money isn't everything to a woman. Can money keep you warm at night? Can you wrap your thighs around it? Rake bloody gases in its back with your painted hollered fingernails? Edna! Edna! So, how's Stephanie? Speaking of Stephanie, I still haven't gotten an invitation to the wedding yet. I don't have anything to do with that. That's okay. Personally, I'd prefer a pass to the honeymoon. You could use the back seat of my Tucker for the maiden voyage. It's plenty big. Believe you me. I'd drive you around. And I wouldn't look in the back seat. I guarantee it. Though, if you'd like to come up front and take the wheel a while, I wouldn't say nay. Heck of an automobile, isn't she? Damn shame I have to sit out here and watch over her all the time. But if I didn't, those stupid kids might scratch her up playing ball. Don't see why not, but don't touch her. I'm mighty particular about my Tucker. I had the garage remodeled like a fortress, so I could lock her up at night and get some sleep. I'm sure she's safe enough inside. A few months back, someone broke into my house, trying to get into the garage. I had to gripe like hell before the sheriff agreed to start the evening patrols and instigate the curfew. Edna Fitzpatrick is one. Karen's only five years old. Since Mr. Fitzpatrick passed away, in Edna's arms and legs, I might add, Edna's been raising Karen on her own. What a shame. To deprive a little girl of a positive male role model and her mama of a fine, stiff penis. Bye now. Kiddo, you brought me any of them girly picture books? No, sorry. Oh, heck. Why should you be any different from the sheriff or Mrs. Loomis? Steve, I'd be right obliged if you could just see Claire to bring me just one of them books. Believe me, it'll be worth your time to do it. In a time, kiddo. Boy, the way you keep pestering me, you'd think you were feeling guilty about something. Are you? I understand you witnessed Miss Whaley's dispensing a little discipline at the school, and she thinks you may be uh, feeling a mite bent about it. That's always the wisest course, boy. Sticking your nose where it doesn't belong can get you in a world of trouble. Especially if you're a gynecologist. Heck, there isn't a psychiatrist around who disagree about what a calming influence a dent in the head can be. You can't argue with science, Steve. It's bigger than all of us. Stop on by any time, Steve.
sorry, son. No time to talk. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow nor hell shall keep the mail from its appointed rounds. It's been missing for months now. I keep meaning to get another, but, well, the button's very distinctive. I'd have to file an S-411 with Washington to get another, and I just don't need the extra paperwork. Sure wish I could find it. Next time you post, don't forget the zip code! Damn it! That interests me not at all, young man. My button. Why, I lost that months ago. Where did you find it? Funny thing, that. I found it in the ashes. At the newspaper building. What are you implying? That I had something to do with setting the fire? Preposterous. Why, a hundred people must have visited that site since the fire. You just try showing that button to Sheriff Duane, son. He'll laugh you right out of his office. That interests me not at all, young man. Sorry, son. No time to talk. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow nor hell shall keep the mail from its appointed rounds. Next time you post, don't forget the zip code. My button. Why, I lost that months ago. Where did you find it? Funny thing, that. I found it in the ashes. At the newspaper building. What are you implying? That I had something to do with setting the fire? Preposterous. Why, a hundred people must have visited that site since the fire. And what if I did? I guess I'd be pretty grateful to anyone who could help get me off the hook. How? You seem like a capable lad. Hypothetically, let's say there was a gas can sitting in the evidence room at the sheriff's office. A gas can which might have some incriminating prints on it. Someone might be very grateful for the return of that gas can. Say, grateful enough to provide whoever returned it with a large application. Oh, and Steve, you'll keep this to yourself. If you're smart. By George. Oh, by Jiminy. Oh, this here's the real thing. Oh, can I have it? Oh, oh, thank you, Steve. Excuse me, kiddo. I gotta go check the jail for clean towels. Coming around, I'm out with the gum.
Well, that didn't work. Hello, Steve. Where's Loomis? Yeah, but come around. I'm out. Let me come. Oh, oh, that's yeah. good. <gasps> Loomis, damn you! <laughs> Wait, no, 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 you no! Uh, no! Standing up the mattress Dwayne, again. No. Folding up the towels. No, I turn out snake mouth. No. no. Sorry, son. No time to talk. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow nor hell shall keep the mail from its appointed rounds. Next time you post, don't forget the zip code! What does this mean? Hmm. This is unexpected and awkward. But my luck's been bad ever since Duane found that darn gas can at the newspaper building the day after the fire. He has this insane notion that it's mine. I pay him not because I'm guilty, but because I don't want him slurring my good name around Harvest. Oh, naturally. You know, he keeps that gas can in the evidence room at his office. I'd be really grateful to whoever could fetch me that can. Grateful enough to provide him with a lodge application. Oh, and Steve, you'll keep this to yourself, if you're smart. What does this mean? That's an interesting item, but the fact that you ask me that question proves you know nothing. You don't know what you're doing, and I'm not going to tell you. So you might as well forget about this, or better yet, take it to the sheriff and see what it gets you.
Oh my god. I can't believe it. After all this time... Where's my application, Boyle? Here, take it. With my thanks. You know, this morning as I was making my rounds, I noticed an awful lot of television aerials on the roofs. Seems like more and more each day. You got me this can just in time, youngster. I may have need of it again. What do you mean? There's another reason why Sheriff Duane didn't investigate the Sentinel fire. If you'd like to get something else on the blackmailing bastard, check around the television station. Why you still can? That's a ticket. Now, where did you get these, Steve? I guess not. Of course, I could kill you right now. But you won't, because I've got the original checks, which prove that Boyle burned down the newspaper building, and that you've been blackmailing him to keep it quiet. I've hidden them. Anything happens to me, they might turn up. Soon. Uh-huh. All right. You've got me, boy. Tell you what. I'd give you one of Sheriff Dwayne's custom deluxe get-out-of-jail-free cards. That is, if I catch you doing something, I'll look the other way. Once. That's the deal. How about it? All right. Just bring me the originals, and we'll close the deal.
What do you want, Steve? I hear him at night, thrashing and moaning. I crawl out my window and see Mom's shadow on the shade. Pot holders on her hands, reaching for him. How can she do the stitches on him wearing those? Wouldn't she slip? Don't be silly. She wouldn't do that. Of course she'd slip. Maybe that's why he's not getting better. Good. Finally. Hello, dear. How are you today? Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Hey, Steve. You've been doing a swell job putting the paper out in the morning. You just keep doing that and we won't have any problems. That's not much to ask, is it? Swell! Here's the keys to the broom closet at Gein Memorial. That's where they meet every day. About 3.45, soon as everyone has gone home. Sometimes I hide in there beforehand. Daddy, -o, I see some stuff that's real nasty. Take it from me. You made a good swap. Get out, damn you! Get out now! Aw, oh, man. school broom closet? What will people think? Are you blackmailing us, you little shit? Calm down, Mr. Harrell. Stephen would never do that. He's a smiley bear. But we should give him a token of our appreciation for his silence. Here, Stephen, take this baseball bat. You'll find it quite useful. That a boy. Take the bat, and we'll take the photo. However will I keep the children in line now? I have a spare I can bring in tomorrow. Unless you'd prefer a chainsaw this time. I'll talk to Mrs. Phelps.
What are you doing here at this hour, Mr. Potsdam? I'm burying our cat. She passed away and I'm burying her. Go away and mind your own business. Then, where's the cat? I... I left her at home. Now leave me alone! This kind of stuff can come back to haunt you. That's all? As I said, a minor prank. Mind you, you are not to damage the vehicle. Merely put a single scratch in it. Once you have done so, return here, and I shall give you your next task.
did it. So, you have completed your first task. Now that you've scratched the tucker, you may proceed to your second task. You will steal a bolt of fabric from the fireman and bring it to me. Very well then. Use whatever means necessary, but bring the cloth to me here and I shall give you your third task. Leave me alone, will ya? This is the good part. I heard that someone took Karen. Little Miss Perfect gonna get famous. Gonna get a picture on a milk carton. Yeah. Well, I heard that Karen was gone. So I went over to Miss Fitzgerald's house and asked if I could play with Karen. Her mom just stood there. You know, in the doorway and cried and cried. And I just stood there, wondering how long it would take for her to stop. But she didn't. So I went inside and watched TV, because they've got color, because Edna has money, because she runs the diner and all. And I sensed she was feeling vulnerable. So I asked her to fix me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And she did. Then I went into Karen's bedroom and looked around for stuff I could take while Edna was in the bathroom with the water running. But all that there was was girl stuff. So I came home. But it was fun while it lasted. I even had her turn the crust off for me. And then I ate it anyway. She was crying so hard. I could have peeked into her dress if I wanted to. But hey, when a bard's got puffy eyes and a runny nose, who wants a peek at that? Good. Finally. Hello, dear. How are you today? By the way, I spoke with Mr. Johnson and he's living. 
Seems someone scratched up his priceless Tucker. If he finds out who, they'll be heck to pay. Edna's daughter Karen has disappeared. Karen was playing outside as Edna closed the diner, and that's the last anyone saw of her. I haven't the foggiest idea. All I know is she went missing last night. But Steve, this isn't something you want to be concerned with. Trust me. You should be concentrating on joining the Lodge, not some missing girl. Isn't a lost child everyone's concern? Then let everyone worry about it. This is nothing but a waste of time for you. If you spend your time in Harvest looking for Karen, you'll regret it. My time in Harvest? You talk like I'm a visitor, Mom. Don't be silly, dear. Did you hear? Someone exterminated the Wasp Woman. <laughs> exterminated? Got it? <laughs> oh my, I used to be such a card. Everyone in the Glee Club thought so. Oh, I haven't lost it, have I? Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. There now, see how easy it is? Things are so much better between us when you remember the paper in the morning. And let's keep them that way. Thank God I found you. Are you alright, Karen? I want to go home. Could you take me to my mommy's store? Or to the policeman? Can you tell me who did this to you? Mr. Potsdam told me he'd hurt my mommy if I told. He won't do anything, I promise. Tell me what happened. He made me play house. Then he dug a hole. Please, I just want to go home now. Please? Can you tell me your address, honey? I don't know. Just take me to the store or the policeman. Please? Mommy said to go to the policeman if I got lost. And I'm lost. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh my God, Karen. Thank God, what happened? Found her in the graveyard. She was buried alive. And she claims Mr. Potsdam was responsible. Thank you, Steve. Thank you from both of us. Here, here's the reward money. Take it and go. I need to be alone with my baby right now. Did you say hello to your father for me? It's very important! Tell him! 
tell him that I hope he gets better soon, and and don't forget to remind him about his promise regarding the meat. I could use some good news right now. I just got the word. The order turned down my latest application. Looks like we'll be having the wedding at morning hands after all. Yeah, I know what that crazy little bitch said, but it's not true. I was at home that night. Mrs. Potsdam will vouch for me. Isn't that right, Mrs. Potsdam? That's right, Mr. Potsdam. Hello, Steve. Care to stay for some pot roast? Forget the pot roast, Mother. Pot roast isn't for backstabbers. For persecutors. I won't share my meat with him. My meat! My meat! It's the truth. That's why. And I think you'd better be going, young man, before I call your mother and tell on you. <laughs> Someone went and scraped up Johnson's car? Can you imagine? He'd step in a bear trap and chew his own leg off rather than suffer a scratch tucker. Serves the rich bastard right, if you ask me. Stop mumbling, Steve. I can't understand you at all. I... What are you getting at? I wouldn't do that. It's illegal. Not to mention immoral. Yeah. I can't prove it yet and you better hope I never can. <laughs> do I look worried? I... What are you getting at? I... Watching Stephanie? What proof do you have? Now don't carry on that way. That's loose talk there, son. Do you deny it? What do you want? Consider it fixed. Just don't say anything. Steve, I'm so glad you came back. What have you been doing? I visited the lodge. Talked to the sergeant at arms there. He knows that there's something out of whack here. He told me if I wanted to find out what it is, I should join the Lodge. I've decided to join the Lodge, Stephanie. I think the answer to all our questions is inside. That place... It's so sinister. You may be playing right into their hands. Did you think of that? Doesn't it seem like you're being herded toward the Lodge? That's one of the things I hope to find out. I hope finding out doesn't get you killed. My faux mother keeps me up on the latest gossip. Not like she really wants to talk to me. More like she's feeding me information. For instance, she told me that Mr. Johnson's Tucker was vandalized. That's another weird thing. Every car I've seen drive by is a Tucker. There were only 31 produced. What are the odds of that? I've always wanted a Tucker. Funny that Harvest would be full of them. Any idea who scratched the car? Why would you do something like that? It's part of the Lodge initiation. I see. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but getting into the Lodge is the best way to find out. By committing vandalism? Well, I guess you'll fit right in, won't you? Scratching a car is no big deal. Getting out of this mess is. Sorry. When you put it that way, I guess I was overreacting. Is it true? You found Karen? Yeah. Just in time, too. He'd molested her and buried her alive. He couldn't bring himself to kill her outright, so he just decided to stick her in the ground and let fate take its course. Who? Who would do that to a helpless child? She says it was Mr. Potsdam. And I believe her. Oh, Christ. 
And all this time I've been under the same roof with that... With that thing... watching me! Take it easy, okay? So... at least they'll be coming to take him away, won't they? You're not making sense. You're not making sense. You're not making sense. You're not making sense. Come back and visit me soon, okay? No! Leave that there! If any of it turns up missing... Marv, what's going on in there? Go! Go! No! Leave that there! If any of it turns up missing. Marv, what's going on in there? Go. Go. Steve, is that you? Come to see your poor old dad? Are you my father? Really? I don't remember you. Please. I'm not in the mood for jokes. I'm serious, why won't anyone believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Just don't make me laugh now. Remember, the stitches. My God, what has she done to you? She doesn't know you're here, does she? Does she? No, I had to break in. What the hell is going on in here? I know it's a mystery to you. The sacred things that husbands and wives do behind closed doors. Maybe we should have that special father-son talk. Especially now that you're getting... married. <laughs> but listen. I can't talk very loud. It's the tracheotomy. When a man and a woman love each other very much, they go into a room alone 
and shut the door and bolt it with at least three locks and prop a chair under the doorknob so no one can get in or out. Then they take off their clothes and get out a wide variety of scalpels. Some curved, some short, all of them sharp. And then the man climbs on the woman. And then they... With the barbed wire, they... That's all right. Don't get worked up. You need your rest. Yes. Rest. But why did you come? You must have had a reason. For risking it. I need some meat, and Pat won't give me any without your signed permission. Good old dependable Pat. Here, son. Here's my signature. Take it to him, and you won't have any problem. Now go, son. Go quickly. Before she comes back. Can't talk now, Steve. I've got to hose out some entrails. Don't be such a stranger, Steve. And my best to your dad. So, your father okayed the meat, huh? How's he doing? Good, good. Glad to hear it. Here's your meat, son. You run along now. A new shipment of animals has come in and it's time to start cutting. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jeez, what are you doing here? Just standing here, waiting to be drawn. You just hang out here? All the time? I'm not a person, Steve. I'm an object. You'd do well to remember that. A person is his job. Someday you'll understand that. And if you don't, it won't matter, because you'll be dead. Dead? Have you gotten your lodge application in yet? Good. You may survive yet. I guess you're here to steal the bolt. Not at all. That's not my job. However, since I am an object dart, and since art should be interpreted, I'll give you a clue as to where the bolt is located. Darkness gives as darkness gets, but light invoked is light shed. Leave me alone, will ya? This is the good part. Hey, it's too bad that I don't give scout badges for digging up buried kids. I like to see what that badge would look like. I went over to ask her what it was like, being buried alive and all. But she just stared at me, and twitched, and drew up. <laughs> Guess I got my answer, huh? Good. Finally.
Hey, Steve, you've been doing a swell job putting the paper out in the morning. You just keep doing that and we won't have any problems. That's not much to ask, is it? Did you say hello to your father for me? Thank God for that, at least. Those silly willies down at the fire station are just <laughs> incensed about losing some decorating stuff. <laughs> some people. Yeah. Maybe they should be more concerned with fire and less with flame. I... What are you getting at? Watching Stephanie? What proof do you have? Now don't carry on that way. Do you deny it? What do you want? I'm squirming. Squeal for me, Porky. <laughs> You're not going to tell Stephanie or Mrs. Potsdam? I'll think about it, Potsdam. Hello, dear. Come to see Stephanie, have you? She's upstairs. Go right on up. Just remember, she's grounded until the wedding. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Give my regards to your parents. Steve, it's so good to see you again. I get so lonely in here. I'm sorry. Want to hear what's happening out in the real world? No. I'd rather forget about Harvest for a while. Come here. Stephanie? I feel so close to you, Steve. Like we're the only two people in Harvest. The only two real people. Do you know what I mean? I need to feel something again. This sense I have that I've known you. It's my only link to my past. Yeah. Maybe it's different than memory. Maybe we don't remember each other so much as we recall the feelings deep inside. Strong feelings. Maybe the body has its own memory. Let's find out. Take me. Now. Exquisite cloth, 
Its loss should trigger quite a bit of dissension amongst our gallant firefighters. Still, that is not your concern. Your next assignment is to break into the tonsorial establishment of Mr. Pastorelli and abscond with his prized barber's pole. Well, that didn't work.
This is your first arrest, Steve. You just remember, we've got a three strikes, you're out rule here in Harvest. But you keep your nose clean, you hear? Leave me alone, will ya? This is the good part. You're in trouble. How's it feel to be a jailbird? At least I'm not a jailbird. Know what happens to jailbirds? Just like turkeys and chickens, they wind up getting cooked. Fried. Good. Finally. Hello, dear. How are you today? Did you hear what happened at the barber shop? Someone broke into Pastorelli's salon and took his antique barber's pole. The next morning, Pastorelli touched some live wires that the thief left lying around and was electrocuted. Well, that darn foreigner got what he deserved, if you ask me. Coming into a nice little town like Harvest and stealing business. Heavens, if a bowl and scissors were good enough for your father, I don't see why decent working folk need a fancy wop styling their hair. That's how it goes. First you get a sissy trim, then bang, you're a communist. I hear those silly firemen broke out the axes and hacked each other to death. Things never were the same between them after the firehouse robbery. Oh well, maybe now we'll get some real men for the fire department. Though the way things are going, I doubt you'll be around to see it. What do you mean? 
Can't you feel it? The way the stalks whisper in the autumn wind? It's almost harvest time, Steve, when the chaff will be cast aside before the feasts. Congratulations, hero. You found Karen after all. You don't seem proud, Mother. I wonder why. I warned you not to waste time looking for her. Am I running out of time? The blood drive is coming soon. What does that have to do with anything? If you haven't joined the Lodge by then, you'll find out. Still, I'm glad you found the poor baby. She says Mr. Potsdam was responsible for... What happened to her? What a silly little girl. Neither can I. She should be spanked for being such a nasty little liar. But I guess being buried alive is good enough. Isn't it exciting, Steve? Five days and 1,200 cookies later, the bake sale is already here. Where does the time fly? Those 1,200 cookies. How many are you taking to the sale? Oh, about 20. The rest were stale. But the effort wasn't wasted. It's for a good cause. Will you be at the school tonight? That's nice, dear. It's good to be open to new experiences. How exactly is this bake sale supposed to benefit hobos and tramps? Mr. Moynihan over at the Wayfarer Hotel can tell you more about that. Either way, I think you should be at the school tonight. What does Moynihan have to do with this bake sale? He was the one who suggested it. I thought the Lodge was sponsoring it. Is he a member? No, but he has ties to the Order. And he's intimately acquainted with the problem. He not only runs the hotel, he's also the mortician. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Hey Steve, you've been doing a swell job putting the paper out in the morning. You just keep doing that and we won't have any problems. That's not much to ask, is it? Think about taking some of that siding off my hands, son. I'll cut you a nice price on it. I was the one what found Pastorelli this morning after he stepped in the water with the live wires hanging out. His body was so burnt, his arms and legs was blackened, fused together, and the sheep was well done, too. Problem is, both was burnt so bad and the flesh all crisp and distorted, limbs melded. You couldn't tell them apart. And well, I didn't want to take a chance on eating Italian. No sir, I didn't. I tell you, the only thing worse than a fire station full of sissies is a fire station full of peed sissies. They're all accusing each other of stealing some silk underwear or something. Boy, whoever said fighting fire with fire be happy in harvest. Cause we got a fire station full of flamers. Nice to see you again, Steve. I can't talk now, son. I'm busy with this game. Uh, dang it if the whole town ain't going to hell. Poor old Johnson defecating a work of art like that. Well, that's a sure sign that civilization is coming to an end. I guess you heard that dang idiot Pastorelli went out and got himself electrocuted. Somebody stole a barber's pole. The alarm system triggered the sprinkler. 
There was water on the floor this morning, and the darn crook left exposed wires out. Pastor Ellie came in, flipped the switch, and then zap! Yeah, maybe them aliens is hot for colored glass after all. Anytime, Steve. I'm glad to see you. I feel so alone, cooped up in here. I understand that bake sale is today. Yeah, you'd think it was the second coming the way everyone is acting around here. It's insane. The maniacal attention paid to this bake sale. Like all the women in Harvest came from the same cookie cutter. It's unnatural. Unhealthy. Almost a parody of how things should be. And through my window at night? I see my mother throwing out whole batches of cookies, like an automaton getting rid of its surplus product. My so-called mother has been baking cookies all week, and then throwing them out. Better that, than getting rid of us. Wait around long enough. I have a feeling they'll get to it. You know the firemen? Someone stole some fabric from them, and they're up in arms about it. Another harmless prank? And how many more harmless pranks will you be pulling? However many it takes to get in, Stephanie. If I have to use them to escape, then I will. Are you using them? Or are they using you? It was just a bolt of cloth. You've turned the firemen against each other. They think one of their own stole it. Would you rather stay here? I've heard that harvest is lovely in the fall when the leaves turn orange and gold and the annual blood drive paints the town red. All right, all right. You have a point. I don't know if you heard or not, but Mr. Pastorelli, the barber, he's dead. Looks like somebody stole a barber's pole from him, then left the exposed electrical wires and some water on the floor. Pastorelli walked in, flipped on the lights, and... Know anything about that? Oh my god! Steve, that was no little prank! A man died! It was an accident. Forgot about the live wires in the water. That doesn't change the fact that you killed him! This initiation killed him! It was just an accident. An accident which wouldn't have happened if not for the Lodge. Don't you see? I'm beginning to think that the Lodge poisons everything it touches. Harvest, even you. I didn't create this situation. Are you sure? No. But however it started, I'm gonna see it through to the end. Vandalism? Theft? Manslaughter? What's next, Steve? Murder? Look, I know in the beginning I suggested you might check out the Lodge. I was more worried about getting out of here than anything else. But now that I know you, I'm worried about you too. I'm fine. A man is dead because of you. How can you be fine? You've got to stop this. Tell me, is anything positive going to come out of this lodge initiation crap? Yeah, or escape, hopefully. It just seems to me that this order of yours is getting you in deeper and deeper trouble. They can't make me do anything I don't want to do. No. But maybe when it's all said and done, you'll want to do anything. You've got to trust me. Come back and visit me soon, okay? Did you say hello to your father for me? Thank God for that, at least. You know, with a slaughterhouse full of meat in town, what kind of nutcase would steal a barber's pole? Oh well, Pastorelli won't need it where he is. God rest his soul.
Young man, we really have nothing to say to each other. I have the feeling your image shall soon adorn my slab, and I'd rather not know the face of the meat I'm slicing. It seems that, like some elephant's graveyard, people of low station come to harvest to die. They simply drop dead, penniless, and they all need burials. Like that corpse in the chapel, all dressed up and nowhere to go. No mourners, no point. But I still must provide them with prompt burials by town charter and absorb the losses myself. God knows by putting these people up at the Wayward Hotel I do more than my fair share. So why must I pay for the coffins and burial materials as well? My losses to the dead are substantial. Hopefully the bake sale will offset some of them. You know, I seem to have misplaced a ledger. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? How strange. You're the only visitor I've had in days. Except for Mr. Potsdam on Tuesday night, that is. I can't imagine what else could have happened to it. Perhaps the dead walk again and they're hungry for literature. At any rate, should any of them show those ledgers around, they'll wish they'd stayed in their graves. I do hope you'll attend the bake sale and spend heavily. It's for the needy, you know. Sure. And all they have to do to benefit is die. A ditch makes a poor resting place. You'll need to learn that. If you ever want to leave Harvest. You make it sound like I have a choice. A choice that is rapidly vanishing. Join the Lodge, Stephen, while you may. The corpse reclining in the chapel right now is a prime example of the difficulties I face. For unfathomable reasons, this bum decided to wander into harvest and summarily drop dead. Just like that? Indeed. He died of purely natural causes. Of that I have no doubt. But why come to harvest to die? You say this happens often. Isn't that a little too much of a coincidence? I've often puzzled over the situation myself. Though I can assure you, young man, that nothing untoward is happening in Harvest. On the contrary, it's an indication of our compassion that I put up hobos in the Wayward Hotel. And the Order of the Harvest Moon mandates their prompt burial, even when they are without family or means, and when it entails losses on my part. I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. Ah, you've taken up photography, I see. Now why on earth would you choose such a grotesque subject? That John Doe you've got boxed up in the chapel? He didn't just drop dead. Someone helped him take the plunge. Hmm. You may be right. I'm a mortician, not a medical examiner. You don't have to be to know that being ripped to shreds can be detrimental to your health. This is not something you want to be looking into, young man. That's what we all want. What game are you people playing? A game we win or lose together. Look, are you going to tell me what I want to know, or do I go to the sheriff with these pictures? That would be a grave mistake, I assure you. I've told you all I can. My losses have been substantial of late, so I can't offer you money. The only thing I can give you in exchange for the photographs is my tube of astro glue. I do suggest you take it. Or it's all you'll get from me. A wise decision. When a wasp's nest is stirred up, it is seldom the wasps who grieve later. Imported Venetian glass and a
Medallion dreams, you have done well. An unfortunate side effect that Pastorelli was electrocuted because you left live wires in a puddle on the floor. But as those with affectations of worldliness say, say la vie. Yes, a barber cut down in his prime. Of course, you only wanted the pole. But that hardly matters now. Your final assignment is to set a fire in DNA's diner and let the French fry where they may. Buy some cookies? It's for a good cause. Mercy, what a terrible thing to say, isn't it, ladies? Yes, terrible. What a good boy you are. Have a cookie. Derelicts and bums who wander into town who don't have enough money for a decent burial. They deserve to be buried. It's the Christian thing to do. That's awful nice of you. But why do so many derelicts and bums die in harvest? Don't be such a wise apple, Steve. Ladies! Someone has just burned down the TV station! On the night of our baby!
What is it now? Hank? What? Why are you sitting in front of that blank TV? Someone burnt down the TV channel. There's nothing on. Nothing on. Honestly, Hank, you're acting like an alcoholic. I told you all that TV would hurt you. Watching TV don't hurt me, Mom. But not watching TV hurts bad. If I find out who burnt down the TV station, I'll make him wish he was one of those damn Indians. Good. Finally. Hello, dear. How are you today? The nerve of some people burning down the TV station to detract from our bake sale. I doubt the perpetrator did it just to annoy the Harvest PTA. Coincidence? I don't think so. Just six months ago, the newspaper building went up in smoke. Obviously, there's a firebug on the loose. Either that or a communist. Steve, I'm so scared. Just ask Colonel Monroe at the missile base. He'll tell you. Now that the bake sale's over, I just don't know how I'll fill my time. Oh, I feel so... useless. My goodness! What's wrong with her? My goodness! Oh, it's not as bad as it looks. You just pop them back in. See? As good as new, that tarantula she ate must have had wasp eggs in it. Don't you think we should get her to a doctor? What for? She's got her mother. How silly I was, feeling useless just because there are no more cookies to bake. I can still rear my brood. This is a sign, Steve. I have a purpose again. Uh, glad to see you're feeling better. Mine, that fire still burns my britches. First the newspaper building, then DNA's diner, then W-H-A-R. I sense a pattern. And any pattern I can't make a dress out of is no darn good. I suppose you heard about DNA's diner burning down. Sheriff Duane thinks it was a grease fire. We took a black eye on the bake sale, but I'm sure the Harvest PTA annual blood drive will be more successful. Overall, we made about $200, hardly enough to bury a dead horse, and definitely not enough to cover the annual blood drive. Annual blood drive, huh? If you knew how much blood we get, you'd be more impressed. Donations are mandatory, Steve. If you're still here come Sunday, you'll be expected to give. Until it hurts, I suppose. Until it hurts. Even Hank will have to donate. Of course, Lodge members are exempt. Remember that. Hey, either way, no one's sticking me with the needle. We don't use needles. Hank, that kid over by the television? Your little brother is homesick from school today, and I won't have you scaring him with this amnesia poop. Is he really sick? Look at the show he's watching. Wouldn't you say he's sick? I'd make him stop, but oh, I'm so busy baking cookies for the Harvest PTA charity bake sale. It's on Friday, you know. I hope you're still planning on going. I don't know. I, I need to think. Honestly, skipping out of a charity affair. What's gotten into you? I don't know, damn it. That's what I'm telling you. Don't you dare use that language around me. You're lucky your father didn't hear you. Or Stephanie, for that matter. How do you think she'd feel knowing her fiancé was a gutter mouth? Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Damn it, what's so hard about remembering to take out the paper? You need to wise up, pal, before I get mad.
I'm glad to see you. I feel so alone, cooped up in here. I saw the TV station go up from my window. It lighted up the whole town. It looked like hell. I wished it would consume the whole damn place. And me with it. Don't talk like that. I'm sorry. I just can't stand it anymore. I wish there was something I could do. There he is. Make love to me. Do it to me. Now. Say, can you spare a dime for a buckaroo who's down on his luck? The whole shebang just went up in flames, and I'm looking to mosey on to greener pastures, where the sunset's always golden, and there's always another savage to kill. Say, can you... The whole shebang just... I've tried so hard to find an excuse to keep on fighting. But Karen and I can't go on alone any longer. This diner he left us was all we had. It was always a struggle to keep it running in such a small town. And now we've lost it. I know that I can't afford to support us now. There's only one way out. I'm sure you won't be able to understand the depth of despair that would enable a mother to put a rope around her baby's neck and push her into the air and jump after her. I wonder if I'll hear her next now. If she kicks around and takes a long time to strangle me, I'll scream. But I won't cut her down. I've got to be stronger than I ever was before. I hope she doesn't give you. God help us and forgive us, Edna Fitzpatrick.
this diner is no more, as is Edna herself. She hung herself as soon as she realized what had happened to her beloved establishment. A true entrepreneur and a credit to her nation. Her suicide was an unforeseen byproduct, predictable by no one. She killed herself. She made her choice. If you were a catalyst, join the rest of the world. We all live off the deaths of others. Still, you sought to torture Diner, and torched it is. You have proven yourself a worthy candidate for initiation. This was only a trial to determine your worthiness for testing. Your initiation into the mysteries of the harvest will soon begin. In the meantime, be patient. Protocols must be observed before initiation may commence. How I recognize this sign? You will know. When you receive the invitation, bring it here and your initiation shall begin. Hello dear, how are you today? Oh dear, I just heard what happened to Stephanie. What do you mean? What happened to her? You haven't heard? Well, young man, you march right over there this instant. She's your fiancé, after all. You can't go into Stephanie's room till the sheriff gets here. I couldn't say. It's so embarrassing. Feel free to help yourself to refreshments till the sheriff arrives. Guess I can forget about the meat, huh? What do you mean? Your dad must have pulled some strings. Be sure and check Stephanie's pillow, you lucky bum. What the hell are you talking about? You'll see once the sheriff gets here. <sighs> Stephanie, Stephanie. Things will never be the same now. Guess I'll be watching TV nights. Okay, you can come in now, son. My God, is that what I think it is? Yep, it's a spinal cord. Is it Stephanie? I can see a resemblance, but I can't be sure. More pie, Sheriff? Pie? Don't you realize what's happened? Oh, indeed I do. I, I can just hear the tongues wagging at the PTA. Was it... suicide? Never heard of anyone pulling their own spinal cord out before. Off the record, I'd have to say no. 
No, all in all, I'd say this was death by natural causes. Natural causes? You can't live without a spinal cord, son. Nothing unnatural about that. Think I will have some more pie. Right away. I can't believe this. This is horrible. Believe me, you get to the point to where this is routine. Now the only clue we got is that card on our pillow. Take a look at it. This is practically a confession. Confession to what, son? Murder. Isn't that what you're here to investigate? Son, you don't investigate natural deaths. No point. Then I'll get to the bottom of this myself. Yeah. I'm sure you will. More pie, Sheriff? Don't mind if I do. Can't allow you to take her remains, boy. What kind of sicko are you, anyway? I don't suppose it hurt for you to take the card, seeing as it was addressed to you. Shucks, I'm sorry I had to read it in the first place, but that's my job. Say, I wonder if there's more pie. Hello, Steve. Have some pie? No, Steve. We're going to put her in the crypt. Keeping bodies in the house is just not sanitary. What do you want? Harvest will never be the same without DNA's diner. Or without DNA, for that matter. I... What are you getting at? Watching Stephanie? Now don't carry on. Do you deny it? What do you want? Consider it fixed. Just don't say anything. I don't understand. The invitation was not the card, but the spinal cord. It must be presented to me, ere I allow you to enter. I expect nothing. What must unfold will. You were provided an invitation. Bring me the skull spinal cord if you would pass to the world beyond.
Aw, oh, man. What is this? You must now enter the lodge. Initiates find it a hostile place. Are you supposed to help me or get me killed? I'm starting you on the path of initiation to a very special, very exclusive brotherhood. I am merely the administrator of a test. Whether you view me as an enemy or a friend depends on how well you're prepared to pass. And this thing? You haven't said what it is. It is a special weapon. Using it will be part of the initiation. You always have a choice, Initiate. Which choices you make matter only to you. Whatever occurs in here is relevant to the great question which you cannot help but answer. What is at issue is whether in answering the question you will find the answers you seek. You will encounter those intent on preventing or prompting your answer on how you look at it, while the assumption is you want to live. Dying is easy and provides its own answer, but not for you. Just tell me, is Stephanie dead or being held within? The membership director on the second level keeps track of such things. Oh great, then you are against me. Sergeant at Arms, I am here to ensure that the protocols are observed. Deviation from a protocol shall result in punishment. Remember what I have told you. Now, let the initiation begin. Ah, you're here. Excellent. You'll find them through that door. Excuse me? You are the exterminator, are you not? No. In that case, I'm afraid you'll have a hard time of it, sir. Recently, the Lodge has become infested by... pests. They need exterminating, or, to be blunt, sir, they need killing. And plenty of it. The second floor, sir. The entrance is hidden, but a little reflection should reveal the answer. To find the key to the second floor, reach deep within yourself. I wish you good luck, sir. I only hope you can stomach what's ahead.
Well, that didn't work. Damn it. Okay. Well, that didn't work. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself, killing my clientele. Ever since the monsters invaded this level, the members have taken to dining with the Grand Poobah upstairs. Actually, I have to admit, my last few meals haven't been up to snuff. The problem is the freshness of the corpses, or lack thereof. See, the supply has dried up. The sergeant-at-arms always used to insist that bodies killed in the lodge be disposed of without trace, and so the members would bring me their business for preparation and dissemination. Oh dear, you're not a member, are you? 
You're an initiate. Forgive me, I can't say another word about it. Can you tell me anything that might help me? Not really. Well, that didn't work. Well, that didn't work. Okay. Oh, man.
Welcome to the Harvest Moon Art Gallery, sir. I'm the curator of this place. So delighted you could come. That it will, I'm afraid. Art often forces engagement, doesn't it? Lovely works, pastoral scenes, noble sculptures. These are easy on the eye and mind. But when confronted with a work of hideous form, you're forced to deal with it, even if only to dismiss it as trash. Sadly, the most extreme works are the hardest to dismiss. Grotesqueries amid works of beauty are necessary, and that should be taken for granted. Nevertheless, it's important that each individual determine his own sense of aesthetics. For that reason, I give you permission to obliterate that which forces you to linger too long in the gallery. I'm just passing through. If only it were that simple.
Can I help you? I'm looking for a girl. This is a library, not a brothel. You don't understand. I have reason. I hope to believe that she was brought here. Do you know anything about that? I'm afraid not. I tend to stay out of lodge affairs. I'm only in charge of the library, my good fellow. Well, if she is here, she's not been invited as a member. There are no female members of the Order. To be sure, one or two have qualified throughout our history, but they're generally not of our caliber. I doubt there are any females in this building, at least none that are extant. I'm not a member. Women are kept here for the services they are able to render. Just as some jobs are beneath men, so too can certain services only be supplied by women. If she is here, you'll find her on the third floor, which you'll have difficulty finding without my help. And you want something in return. I'll give you a clue as to how to get to the third floor, but only if you'll retrieve an overdue book from one of our charter members, a Mr. Kane. Since he is so highly regarded among the Order, I'm loath to approach him on such an embarrassing matter. Therefore, bring me the book and I'll help you. How will I know which book? Oh, you'll know it. He's not an avid reader. Can I help you? I'm looking... You don't understand... Oh, I see. You're the new initiate. If she is here, you'll... And... I'll give you a clue. How will I... Oh, you'll know it. Let me see. Oh yes, the new initiate. I'm the Lodge Membership Director. What can I do for you? The Lodge is a traditional place, young man, and by tradition, when a young man is courting a young woman, he wins for her a Cupid doll at the fair. There is no fair within the Lodge. However, I have seen a thing which resembles a Cupid somewhere on this floor. Seek it out. Slay it and return here with a prize if you would seek your lady. I am the chess master. Any initiate who wishes to pass this way must do so 
over my dead body. Being a civilized man, I offer my opponents a choice. Solve my problem or fight me to the death. Do you know how to play chess? In that case, mate me and you may pass. Excuse me, you can't come in right now, I just mopped the floor.
fine work. You're obviously an earnest young man. You're in luck. A quick check of my records indicates that indeed a woman was brought into the lodge, although I neglected to get her name, since females are generally not considered for initiation. The young lady is currently being detained on the third floor, in the Chapel of Love. Seek her there. Seek her there. And don't forget to bring her her prize. Little things mean so much.
Well, that didn't work. This is the temple of the mystery of abstinence. Do not eat of the food or you will be punished. All within are hereby bound to a vow of abstinence. This is the temple of the mystery. You obey well, Initiate. Better than your brethren. They have eaten and grown stronger for it. As promised, I will not punish you for your obedience. But they will. And some mothers complain that their children don't come to see them. Shocked? This is the mystery of motherly love. Everyone says motherhood is fulfilling, when in reality, it's draining. From the start, children are parasites. That's what you've got to understand. Sucking the life out of you. Your very life's blood pumping from your belly through obscene pink tubes into their thieving hearts. And even after birth, they keep leeching the life from you. Of course, my children are better at it than most. Is that the bliss of motherhood? That's the mystery. 
Just what the world needs. More greedy little mouths to feed. Children suck the life out of society. They have to be protected, nurtured. Everything has to be childproof and rendered childish. Sadly, they'll suck the life out of you too. You too. Welcome to the Temple of the Mystery of Religion. The mystery is thus. Those who preach love and mercy in God's name are often those who call for the death of heathens. Do you believe in God, my son? You are wise. His mercy anoints us all. And where doth he dwell, the Lord? Indeed, any other response would be blasphemous. Answer me this, if word be with you. Does the Lord bounce on a spring or frolic with the wombats? Yes, the fields of the Lord are rife with wombats, and he is their shepherd. Answer thus, if thou be virtuous, doth God Almighty herd them with his staff or with special imported wombat herding equipment? Naturally. God, being almighty, hath no need to import anything his staff doth serve. Now, I ask thee one final question, which is only known to those amongst the ranks of the saved. The, is God a jar of strawberry preserves, a size 12 sneaker, a foot-long hoagie, an all-expense-paid trip to Brazil, or a new car! You are correct. Pass in peace, brother. The Lord is with thee. What do you want here? I'm just passing through. You think it's that simple, huh? Just passing through? Well, my family was just sitting around. And look where it got them. What of it? My country paid me to kill. 
And then when I came home, I was out of a job. They expected me to stop? Cold turkey? Is that what they wanted? A paycheck today? Jail cell tomorrow? Am I a criminal or an entrepreneur? Hey, let's find out. Okay. Oh, man. Well, that didn't work. Well, that didn't work. Welcome to the Temple of the Mystery of Flesh, Steve. Have a bite? Mr. Potsdam? The mystery is this. Sometimes you have to lose some meat to get some meat. They wouldn't let me in until I demonstrated my worthiness. My invitation came after I buried Karen alive. That showed initiative. And her spinal cord was your ticket in, right? Yes, but to be initiated into the mysteries of the harvest, I had to do one last thing. I let them into the house and into Stephanie's bedroom. Sorry, that's not my department. Now I am a butcher. You should have gotten your dad to hire me on. That way, you could have been the boss instead of the prime cut. Looking for a good time at a reasonable price? All right, that'll be two hundred dollars. All right, honey, one of the ladies will be right with you. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, stud. You shouldn't have picked Crystal, though. She hasn't been feeling well. I'd be sure to get to a doctor if I were you. These diseases can have pretty horrible effects, you know.
welcome to the temple of the mystery of charity. What mystery is there in charity, for God's sake? The mystery is thus. Any act of charity is an act of selfishness. For in any charitable exchange, one must take from another, and one is always left the poorer. I'm glad you do. This way you'll understand. You see, though I am needy, I do not consider myself a beggar so much as a taker. I require charity, Initiate. Give me something. I'm a taker, Initiate. Allow me to take you there. Welcome to the Inner Sanctum, big guy. Principal Harold? Within the Inner Sanctum, you will address me as Vice Muck Harold, second in command to the Grand Muckety Muck. He of the Fez and Buffalo Ham, the secret handshake, the funny passwords. Only fitting, given that my role has always been that of an educator, and Harvest is one big classroom. What do you mean? You'll have to kill me to find out what he means, big guy. a great 
passes over the threshold and becomes a brother. Stephanie? I believe you have something for her. Ring the bell and win a prize for the lovely lady. Or is it win the lovely lady as your prize? Enough games. Agreed.
if I stay. Of course, having completed your ordeal, you may leave with her as you intended and enjoy your victory. If, on the other hand, you wish to join us, the cost of exiting the Lodge is the same as the cost of entering the Lodge. A skull and spinal cord. Hers. These harvesters. They put people through this torture to give them a taste for killing. The way to beat them is to deny them. To live out your life here. With me. You're thinking about killing me, aren't you? Didn't you hear what he said? I do exist. If you kill me here, I'll die for real. And I'll feel all the pain, all the terror, because I'm real. Well. After all, what's a murder without pain and terror? We will feed the pain impulses directly into our brain, and then pull the plug. You will be a murderer, this time for real. So what will it be? Life in harvest, or life as a harvester? gotta be a better way to develop these serial killers. This is scientific. You want we should go back to the old way? What old way? Good breeding.
Where are you going? Nowhere. Nowhere at all. What are you doing, son? Playing Harvester. That thing? I looked at it the other day. The very thought. Breeding serial killers. It's disgusting. It's cool. You'll rot your mind playing games like that. Don't you know people who watch violence become violent themselves? That's bullshit, Mom. No, it isn't. Why do you think they started cutting the violence out of those Roadrunner cartoons? Roadrunner cartoons? <laughs> Roadrunner cartoons? <laughs> <laughs>